G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. And welcome to the J8B. For clicking on this video, Mao himself has given you plus 100 social credit score. This plane has come to the game and is actually pretty interesting. It's come to the game in a similar fashion to the J7E and has a lot of uh, resemblance, let's say, to the J7E in the, uh, in the way of it having some fairly standard missiles. It has four PL-5Bs or, alternatively, a couple of exciting missiles in the form of the Aspide 1As. These are essentially really, really turned up AIM-7s. And the Italians literally sold them to the Chinese government. And then, I think it was post Tiananmen Square, basically they were like, nah, you're not getting any more of these things, goodbye. And so China basically made their own. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what they're called under the Chinese designation, um, but they did end up uh, basically reverse engineering their own, as they always do. Now, uh, as a result, I believe, of the Tiananmen Square mass massacre, the radar was going to be something that the Americans were also developing at the time and was going to be fairly modern. Um, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, in the comments below, that this particular plane just was given a standard radar because they couldn't they couldn't develop a pulse doppler or they couldn't develop one or at least buy one off someone that was uh, of sufficient quality and so at, in war thunder we don't get pulse doppler radar on the j8 at all which kind of sucks that leaves this plane in a bit of a hairy position to be honest it's kind of like mig 19 at the back mig 21 in the middle and i guess mig 25 at the front it kind of looks like the MiG-25. It definitely doesn't have the avionics of the MiG-25, which would be extremely impressive, um, but it's got a lot of good qualities that both the MiG-19 and the MiG-21 retain. Um, it is an extremely long boy. It's a very, very long plane. I'm pretty sure it's like the longest fighter that we have from tip to tail in War Thunder. Uh, and it's got some fairly interesting qualities. Now, because it's got a Delta wing, it is fairly easy to lose a lot of speed. Uh, it is fairly big, so you would assume that it is fairly heavy, but it actually can tussle with the likes of like the MiG-21 uh, and even the bigger, fatter MiG-23M and MF. Uh, I'm not really sure about the MLD and the MLA just yet, but uh, we will have to play some more games to figure that one out. So here I'll show you the Aspid missiles. These are, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of annoying uh, with the locks. So you can get some, some good locks on these, but you've got to be careful because I don't know if for some reason flares seem to like these particular, or, or this missile seems to like flares. I'm not really sure how that works in terms of like flares and chaff and, and uh, how it actually works to distract a radar signature. Um, I originally thought that it would just make the, the radar signature bounce away and sort of distort it. Um, I could be entirely wrong, but Either way, we're here in a dogfight with a MiG-21, and the MiG-21 would actually win here at high altitude. So you've got to be careful. The only reason, I believe, why you can actually do this with a MiG-21 at lower altitude is because you have that sort of thrust of weight. This has a, a lot of engine behind it. I believe these are two uh, MiG-21 engines. So you've got basically double the thrust, and whilst you do have a lot more weight, uh, it is going to be kind of nice with that sort of uh, level of acceleration. Now, the Aspid missile, despite flaring, seems to have just magically worked in this case, and that is really, really nice. Uh, you will have to use this missile at higher altitudes, and uh, if you are going to look down, you have to be very, very close range. So uh, don't rely on this missile too much. And in fact, for the next two battles, you're going to see me use the PL-5Bs, which are essentially a mix between the 9J and the 9G. Uh, they are actually really nice missiles and they're kind of unique. So I, I really like having them in the game because they're some sort of weird hybrid thing, which means it isn't direct copy paste. Now, the MiG-23 here wants a little piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip below. I know the MiG-23 MF is going to probably put his wings out and so get himself a little bit more lift, but I'm going to try and cut on the inside. Now, I've done a little bit of a mischief here, uh, and the MiG-23 MF could have easily had me if he wasn't focusing on his missile. Uh, and so I've gone over the top and hopes that the MiG-23 is going to come up. I'm going to put a little bit of speed in here in the dive, let it loose with the 23mm, and easy pilot sniper right there. This plane 
just gives me some good feelings. And in the nose, that 20 mil, uh, that 23, uh, it's positioned really nicely. Like I, for some reason, have issues when I'm sort of against other uh, planes and using the 23 mil, like the 23 mil in the MiG-23. Uh, I actually, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. Uh, but for other planes, like the uh, J-8B, it's it just works, and I I just don't get it. So maybe if you guys are struggling with the 23, it could just be literally the position of, of it relative to the uh, to the fuselage. Now, I do manage to strike the FGR2 here in the wing. And uh, as you'll see throughout this gameplay, you'll notice that this plane is a bit more of a 1v1 type plane. It definitely retains its uh, MiG-19 personality, if you will, where it definitely favors one versus ones as opposed to multi-engagement scenarios. So you need to find cases where you're going to be isolated and or where you're going to get the drop on your opponents. Because you don't have pulse Doppler radar, you can't just go in and smash some aim sevens in people's faces because it's just not going to work you can't do it phantom style because they're just going to have the range they're going to have the pulse doppler and of course they have in uh, some cases comparable missiles and of course being uh you know phantoms carrying eight they're going to have more than you so you really need to take that into consideration what i'm doing here is I'm just going to skirt around the battlefield. I'm going to look for the people that are climbing. I'm going to look for the people that are going to be really sort of not paying attention. Try and pick them off first. And then I'm going to move in towards dogfighting. And hopefully by then, the average speed of your opponents has gotten low enough to where the 23 mils are actually going to be of some decent use. And that's not to say that at supersonic speeds you can't get kills. It's just uh, ex extremely rare. And it's also excruciating trying to get kills at high speed when you can just do it at low speed anyway. That's kind of the way I see it, you know, you use your missiles for high speed and you use your guns for low speed, unless it's a Vulcan or a Gau-8 and you just burt away and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. So I have noticed that there is a fair fight brewing over on the other side of the map and this J7E is jumping down onto the Jaguar. Now because the J7E and the uh, probably the SU-22 down there are both going to go for it, I'm just not going to bother because he's probably going to flare because of the two jets down there, and uh, that's going to completely destroy any chances of me getting an extra kill. So all I'm going to do is keep my eye on the prize, not go for the first target I see, and continue climbing. This plane has a phenomenal climb rate, by the way. I actually don't know another jet that has such a great climb rate, um, as well as uh, if you guys are paying attention to the screen there or the background. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with the rendering. It does look a little funny. I have no idea what's going on. Um, if anyone knows what uh, is going on, it could be Gaijin's like new rendering system uh, and the way the um, the Pascal graphics cards work. Speaking of Pascal, I'm hoping to upgrade to Lovelace in this generation. And for those of you that would love to support that, of course, uh, those of you on Patreon and those of you on um, doing the bu buying stuff from Air Models using my uh, decal link in the description below have helped that out immensely. So. Uh, we're well on our way to be able to buy one when uh, launch day comes. Hopefully, they're not $2,000. So, <laughs> either way, we get ourselves a nice two easy kills there from the missiles. Of course, these are people that are not paying attention, and so it's much easier to get those kills. The MiG-23 MF, I know, is a big fat bastard, and so I'm basically able to just sizzle with this guy until he overshoots. I know he's going to overshoot at some point, and it looks like that time is almost about now. You can see that he's trying to pull away, he's trying to pull some energy, and then uh, it's, it's pretty close. It's getting pretty close. He could have bursted away if he had a little bit more speed, but it looks like he's going around and going to try and, I don't know, seal the deal? Not really, because the deal kind of gets sealed for him. Uh, in uh, not in his favor. I'm going to send the PL-5B his way anyway, just to finish him off. And of course, that is a 1v1 dogfight done and dusted very easily. So, now that I've mentioned 1v1 one, one one dogfights, we're pretty much out of that stage now, uh, because everyone's low to the deck and sort of doing their little turn fighty thing. And so, I need to find uh, enemies that are going to either respond in my favor, to things like a PL-5B, or alternatively, just boom and zoom them until they drop dead. Uh, and it looks like this Mirage is kind of going to join the ladder boat here. He's kind of low in speed, he's uh, kind of low in energy, and I'm going to come in here. He pitches way, way up. I'm not able to get in on him in time. Uh, and it looks like he's just about cobra himself to stalling point. So it's, it's not looking good for him. 
there's a nice big fat missile coming in for my face but of course I've got enough flares to deal with it and I'm just going to pitch up roll around bleed a bit of speed in the turn there and try and go around for the reversal here you can see the MiG-21 is looking pretty slow he's bled a lot of speed and of course that means that I can maybe get a missile off here if I, if I can get the missile off, then that means it's going to be good. But it looks like he's heading towards me. I'm going to go for a quick burst because I know he's going to be a threat. Critical hit him. It looks like I've taken his tail control. It is no longer a threat. Time to turn back to the MiG-21. Dodge out of the way just in time for the MiG-21 to shoot. And that leaves me on top again. Of course, because I'm able to bleed so much speed and then pick it up again, I'm in a really, really good position here to defeat the MiG-21. And of course, when the MiG-21 has the uh, big fat ECM pod, it does leave them a lot heavier. This plane has its flares all built in, and so it doesn't really need to worry about that. Easy reversal, beautiful kill, stunning ace, nothing more to say. This plane is absolutely great fun when it's in the right situations. You are going to find yourself in pretty shit situations. There is no doubt about that. But my god, when you are in a great situation, it is so easy to make bank off it. Because you just have the capability to throw everything at the wall in a 1v1 or in a dogfight. I think this is going to be on par with things like the Vigan. Uh, I, I actually want to know how the Vigan goes up against this thing. Because I haven't had the chance to do a nice serious 1v1. I have in things like the F... Or like, like against the... Uh, F5s and of course like you saw in the video there uh, the MiG-21 but of course this plane is I'm sure there's more potential here to be unlocked and of course this plane is supposed to carry pythons uh, or PL-8s I think it is uh, these are basically like Israel's god tier missile I don't think that they should be given to them just yet if you were to give this thing all aspect missiles you would have to throw it at a really high BR like 11.7 .7 or 12.0 because the performance of this plane is actually really good uh, and the reason why I like it over the Kvir for example because you know the PL-5Bs are quite similar to the to the Kvir's uh, AIM-9Gs and of course the performance is similar no pulse Doppler radar uh, but of course I don't know what it is I feel like the Mirage chassis the Mirage airframe as a whole is a little bit lackluster I just feel that the energy retention offered by the J8 supersedes that of the ability of the Kefir, and I think that the ability of the of the uh, J8B to just do more things uh, just feels better, and it's just nicer. Now, speaking of nice, we're going to get ourselves a nice 4km missile snipe here with the PL5Bs, simply because our opponents are not paying attention. we got one. Uh, two coming up really soon maybe I could get that F-104 if I really felt frisky but there we go we just just didn't save our F-4E there but you know what that's uh, not too bad taking out two enemies with his help so that's pretty much us covered if you think about it as a 15 versus 15 if you kill at least one person then that's pretty much like your job done that's like you've carried your weight you've pulled your weight and of course the F-4E didn't get a kill but he certainly helped bait those two planes, and so when you add the two of us together and the two opponents that I took out, it, it kind of evens out in a number sense. And so we're going to go in here looking for some targets. I'm going to go in for the one at the end of the pack. Now this is a trick that you might use from props, um, and I've now switched to a target that is the easiest because it looks like everyone's kind of switched up their direction. The Mirage is looking like the juiciest target. The MiG-21 also gets a nice big fat missile ready for it. Uh, and that's two more kills. All I need to do now is take out this MiG-21 for the ace, and then it's easy, easy game. He's looking pretty slow. Can I do it? Absolutely. Of course I can. The uh, guns on this plane, mwah, chef's kiss. Most beautiful things I've ever used in my life, I swear. It's almost like the MiG-19 all over again. This plane is really, really fun. And of course, like I've said, it's not your top dog. You're not going to be expecting to do the best in it, but... I tell you what, it is certainly really fun to fly. It's uh, it, it's good. I it gives me, I've got the thumbs up for it. It's uh, certainly something that I would recommend that you grind out if you if you're you know busting into China, and uh, you know working your way up that tech tree. Certainly something that you would definitely be worth considering doing. It's uh, it's a really good plane, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I definitely enjoy it more than the Kvir, um, even though both of those planes are. <clears throat> maybe sort of 50-50 in terms of their abilities. But I tell you what, this thing 
it, I think it's I think it's the climb rate and the energy retention to be honest. They're both stunning. They're both really strong. And of course, the uh, MiG-21 here is not really much of a chance against me and the SF-22 here. Uh, the F5V also comes in and sweeps it up. So pretty easy kill here. I think this plane has real potential. I think this platform has real potential. And I think this whole line of planes, because there's a bunch of them. There's, there's not just the J-8B and the J or the J-82. Um, there's the base J-8, of course. Um, and then you have uh, like EF and a couple more. So having more of these planes, perhaps it, there's one with a pole stoppler radar, perhaps there's one that can carry more missiles, uh, perhaps there's one that can carry maybe slightly better missiles, something between the PL-5B and the PL-8. Um, I would love to see these types of missiles in the game. Um, something maybe ever so slightly more meta, something ever so slightly stronger would be absolutely perfect because this plane is a solid basis. I feel like this plane has the foundations very strongly laid, very well laid, uh, and I think that this plane has a lot of potential. It's a really fun plane, um, and of course that acceleration, that climb rate, and the ability to sneak up on your opponents is something that we don't really see at top tier, and it gives it a bit of a new flavor. I have to admit, the whole sort of pulse Doppler meta, it isn't always that fun. Of course, you have your bad days, but it does get stale after a while, and having this to shake it up has been really, really refreshing. I thoroughly enjoyed this plane, I thoroughly recommend it, and uh, I thoroughly hope that this F-104 does not crash into the ground and die, because that would be really unsporting if you ask me. Lovely. So, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoy your social credits. Uh, definitely very well deserved. Thank you very much for watching all to the end. If you guys would like to support the channel, you can follow the wonderful people on Patreon and uh, put some money in for that if you would like to. Uh, if you want to earn something, you could also buy merch. You could buy stuff using the decal link in the description below. And of course, through the Air Models affiliate link as well. All of these go to supporting the channel and hopefully, Hopefully we can get ourselves a nice new graphics card one day and play this game at 4K, as well as uploading at 4K. So ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.